Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based on the time you are watching. This video belongs to a series with an aim to educate the masses on the very basics of sustainability and its related topics, including their actions and impacts. No prior knowledge of any subject is required. Let us explore today's topic. You might have heard recently about limiting the Earth's climate to 1.5 degrees C or else there is a disaster waiting for us. What is this 1.5 degrees C and why is it important and how it can be achieved? We know from greenhouse gas video that GHGs trap heat and raise the Earth's temperature to make it habitable. As the concentration of GHGs rise in the atmosphere, the Earth's average temperature increases due to the extra heat trapped by these gases. Some scientists have argued that the increase in concentration of CO2 and other GHGs are completely natural, whereas other popular opinion of climate scientists is that the higher concentration of GHGs is purely due to human activity. To support this claim that global warming is man-made, there are two famous graphs discussed more frequently. This first one was presented by a team of scientists led by Michael Mann in 1998, showing the global temperatures of Earth in the past 600 years. The graph later was well known by the term called hockey stick graph because the relatively stable temperatures of the past 600 years resemble the shaft of the hockey and the sudden climb of temperatures imitates the blade. Since the temperature records began roughly around 1880, scientists used climate proxies to determine the average temperature before this time. It is done by assessing the iron ores, tree rings, corals, etc. And it's like having atmospheric condition frozen or trapped in these ores and rings. And scientists bore or cut through these layers to decode the required data. Later, the same team of scientists produced data of the past 2000 years using the same proxy technique. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, known as IPCC, put the hockey stick graph in the summary of his 2001 assessment reports. There have been multiple debates in the past two decades about this graph. However, every year the blade of the stick is getting sharper. The second famous graph is developed by a scientist called David Keeling, which shows the concentration of CO2 gases in the atmosphere on daily basis since 1958 to this day in Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii and now well known as Keeling Curve. It shows that CO2 in the atmosphere is increasing sharply since then. A steady increase is seen from 313 parts per million by volume of CO2 in March 1958 to 406 parts per million in November 2018. The proxy technique used to find the CO2 concentration trapped in polar ice cores show that in 1958, the mean concentration of CO2 was around 275 to 285 ppm only. There are about 100 sites collecting CO2 data now, confirming the killing curve. These two graphs endorse each other and provide a solid foundation of climate change. We have established a connection with the increase in temperature and the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. And as reported on time.com, the link is available in the description, average temperature on the Earth has increased by 1.09 C by 2016 compared to pre-industrial levels that is around 1850. The average of 1 degree temperature does not seem to be much on a global scale, but it has a very high potential of destruction by natural disasters. The target we have set of 1.5 degree C is to limit the increase of average Earth temperature by 1.5 degrees C maximum from pre-industrial levels, that is around 1850. If we do not limit emitting CO2 and continue business as usual, we are going to reach the 2 degrees by 2036. These predictions are based on various climate models scientists have developed in the past few decades studying the behavior of Earth and its response to global warming. The figure shows the disaster comparison between 1.5 C and 2 degrees C based on simulations. In order to meet the climate goal of 1.5 C, the emissions of CO2 is to be reduced and the existing CO2 is to be extracted. Since most of the fossil fuel burning is used for electricity production, we need to find alternative ways to produce energy. Renewable sources are best when it comes to emission-free energy. On the other hand, we need to use energy more efficiently and be more conservative about energy use. We must also produce responsibly 
and efficiently to reduce wastage in the landfills that also releases DHGs in the atmosphere. More trees and forests are to be planted to naturally extract CO2 from atmosphere and other man-made techniques should be developed to extract it artificially. The Conference of Parties on Climate Change, famously known as COP or COP, brings all the stakeholders on one table to discuss and decide what should be done to limit this climate change. COP28 was recently held in Dubai for the same discussions. Are we able to limit the average global temperature to 1.5 degrees C? Are these computer simulations putting all these horrible scenarios are correct? We are going to find out very soon. Thank you for watching up to this point. If you want me to discuss any other topic related to this subject, please mention it in the comment and I will try my best to come up with a short video covering the basics. Have a good day.